In part two, we focused on the exterior of our new AZ-1 by giving it a thorough cleaning on the outside, under here, and under here too. After that, we took on a bunch of small detail jobs to improve the overall appearance, and finally, to give the car that factory fresh look, we bolted on a set of original AZ-1 Mazda Speed wheels that we got from Japan. Now we begin our work on the AZ-1 snug and sporty interior, followed by some necessary maintenance. Let's get to work. Compared to other cars I've owned and fixed up in the past, the AZ-1's interior was clean and in excellent shape. This was refreshing as the task of deep cleaning a dirty interior can leave one feeling a bit squeamish. So other than a good vacuum and wipe down, the interior just needed some attention in a few key areas. First up was the road flare. Japanese vehicles of this era were required by law to have an emergency road flare installed, and while it's a great original part that adds, um, flare to an imported car's interior, there is one catch. They expire. Now I'm not sure exactly what happens to an expired road flare, but I imagine it can't be great, and I really don't want to find out. I know they still burn pretty good, as you can see when I set off the expired one from my Nissan Figaro last year. So to keep that factory appointed, Japanese market look, I chose the safer, more modern option of an LED road flare. Yes, you are looking at a genuine Amon Very Signal Lights. The one and only warning flare that you can car in. Thank you for this meaningful translation, Google. You did your best. So with that revelation, let's see what Google can tell us on the other side of the box. Um, why does the word Bruno keep popping up over here? Anyway, I get the gist of it. Don't take this thing in the bathtub with you. Got it. I picked this one up on eBay from a seller who was located in Japan. I was pleasantly surprised by the reasonable price, fast shipping, and it's actually a good product. eBay has earned quite the reputation when it comes to car parts over the years, but there's plenty of gems in there if you dig around enough. I think this would make a good addition to anyone's road trip toolkit. The LED light lasts for hours compared to about five minutes for a road flare. You don't have to light it, you just twist the base to turn it on. It's magnetic so you can attach it to your car, and arguably the best feature of all, it won't catch your hair and or body parts on fire. It's made to be an exact replacement for traditional flares, so installing it is easy, you just snap it in place. Nice. Okay, let's change gears for a moment. If you're like me, and you probably are since you're here watching my goofball videos on my goofball YouTube channel, I already know that you love optional goods. Well, back in 1992, the AZ-1 was brimming with a stunning array of optional goods. You got your basic ornaments, you got your comfortable ornaments, you got your outer handling ornaments, and last but not least, your inner handling ornaments. All the ornaments, they're all here. My AZ-1 has a variety of these options sprinkled throughout, but my favorite is the optional Momo steering wheel that this car came with. But this is a good news, bad news kind of deal. The bad news is that the steering wheel needs restored. While I may do that someday, in the meantime, I chose to pick up a new replacement Momo steering wheel from Summit Racing. This is the Momo Tuner, which I got in black leather and red stitching with anodized black spokes in a 320 millimeter size. This size is 35 millimeter smaller in diameter than the stock wheel, which is universally regarded to be a little too large for the cramped quarters of this car. This will make getting in and out much easier and will finally give me a place to put my right knee. Okay, the first step to installing our new wheel is removing the old one, so let's get to it. This particular Momo model from back in the day had this cool padded center section that housed the horn button and had this pretty convincing faux mounting ring look. So once you pop that off, you get to the real mount with its six Allen screws. Here's a comparison of the new and old wheel. You can see that the new version isn't so small that it will affect steering effort, but just smaller enough to make a nice improvement in look, feel, and legroom. Installing this wheel was a breeze since this car already had a factory Momo hub adapter installed. 
So in goes the new center trim ring and horn button using the included Allen screws. Now that we've got a nice new steering wheel, we gotta do something about this stock, plasticky, and toothpickish shifter. To freshen up the look while keeping things understated and factory original, I picked up an OEM shift knob from a 1997 to 2006 Subaru Impreza WRX. I prefer factory shift knobs as the leather always seems to be high quality, the weighting is always good, and they hold up great. But there aren't many options for 5-speed OEM shift knobs since the AZ1 strangely uses the large M12 size. So this really limits your options since most every other import from this era uses an M10 knob. Thankfully Subaru is weird too and uses this larger 12mm thread size. Oh yeah, that's so much better! It's amazing how much of a difference a good steering wheel and shifter can make in the look and feel of a car. It's an affordable upgrade that you can make to almost any vehicle. Well, except for this Ferrari. Yeah, there's no upgrade for this. This is peak steering wheel right here. Speaking of steering wheel and shift knob upgrades, maybe you demand a more luxurious feel with your steering, shifting, and e-braking experience. Well, have I got something for you. Boom! Look at this. I can't even imagine what this does to one's driving experience. Oh, and these are just a few of the available covers. Heck, you could do up your whole interior like this if you wanted to be completely encapsulated in wool. Wow. The look on these sheep's faces really says it all. Up next, to preserve all the AZ-1's rare rubber seals, I ordered up some of this Shinetsu grease from Honda, which is the best stuff you can use to preserve and restore your car's rubber seals and weather stripping. In addition to preserving your seals, it can reduce or eliminate wind noise and other rattles around doors, windows, and sunroofs. Application is pretty simple. You just clean your seals, spread the grease on, let it sit for a couple hours or so, and then wipe away the excess. Just know that a little goes a very long way. This tube should last a couple hundred years, I'd guess. In between caring for my seals, I found that the stock AZ-1 floor mats were in need of some attention too. These were another item from the glorious optional goods catalog, so as usual I needed to proceed with caution as not to ruin my unicorn mats. They weren't too dingy, so after vacuuming them, I sprayed on a mixture of dish soap and warm water, followed by some brushing, some more brushing, pressure washing, and rinsing. After letting them dry completely out in the sun, I chucked them back in the car. They really do add some nice contrast to the otherwise dark interior. Okay, next up is this third brake light. The housing was looking a little chalky and the glass under it needed cleaning. So after removing a couple screws, the housing easily comes off. With the housing on the bench, you can see the plastic looks oxidized and the brake light lens needs polished. Let's get this thing looking like new. Now that the window's clean, it's time to reinstall our restored brake light. It's always the little things that add up to make something great. All right, we've got the car looking great inside and out. Time to do some good old fashioned basic maintenance. Now thankfully, I have a PDF of the original factory service manual to guide me on this journey. Wait a minute, what's going on here? Oh, I knew there was a trick to working on this thing. You just gotta get really high first. Done and done. So now that we're good and ready to get to work, delving deeper into the manual reveals this fun anthropomorphic globule. Let's break this thing down a bit. It's got human features, a face, arms, legs. It's clearly sentient. In fact, it appears to be communicating with the human auto technician. It even seems to have some rudimentary emotions, happiness, sadness, confusion, um, straining. I honestly don't know if it has a formal name, but let's call it, uh, Orby. Yeah, that works. Okay, the first job on our list is an oil and filter change. To accomplish this task, I got the necessary tools, 
oil filter, and oil. For instructions, I used some pages from the service manual and an awesome guide that I found on the AZ1 owners group on Facebook. For oil, I'll be pouring in Valvoline's VR1 Racing Synthetic, which offers a high zinc and phosphorus additive package, perfect for our high revving turbo Suzuki engine. What you realize quickly about the AZ1 is that you aren't doing much of anything from back here. You gotta use the edge and access panel, dumbass. Just take the spare out, move the carpet, and then remove the panel. Okay, so in order to reach the oil filter, all we have to do is take the spare out, move this carpet, and then remove the engine access panel. So let's see how that goes. I just said that. Didn't I just say that? Every, everybody heard me say that. You forgot the seed, Einstein. You dumb ass. Okay, Orby. Okay. While I appreciate the helpful tips and advice, I just can't, uh... Oh, you know what? Actually, that gives me an idea. You know, I've got this super fun place that all the Orbeez love to go. Would you like to go see it? No, no, it'll be fun. Come on, let's go. Okay, here we go. Catch you later, dude. Ah! Okay, so with the access panel off, we can finally see the cool stuff like the turbo, intercooler, and little details on the valve cover. Oof, I can see that oil filter way down under. Just like my Nissan Figaro, the old filter was put on over in Japan by this guy. Sheesh! After a good bit of trial and error, I finally broke it loose. With that done, let's drain the oil too. Okay, the new filter is on and it's white, so it should be easier to see next time. Time to put the fresh oil in. Now where's that oil cap? I sure could use Orby's help right now. Hey, let me out of here, you dumbass. Uh, on second thought, I think I'm good. You haven't seen the last of Orby? I'll be back. Next up is to install a new oxygen sensor. But before we do that, here's a little size reference on this tiny turbo. After spraying some penetrating oil, it came right out. Bolting in the new stock replacement was super easy too. Our next job is a complete vehicle safety inspection. For this, I got the AZ-1 up on the lift and in full hovercraft mode. If you're wondering why I didn't do the oil change while it was on the lift, it was just easier on the ground given that half the job is done inside the car. I like to use a printed vehicle inspection checklist, which you can find easily on Google. Thankfully, the AZ-1 passed this inspection with flying colors. This was also a great time to examine and learn about how this car is engineered. One thing that always amazes me about mid-engine cars is the miles-long cooling and AC lines that run from the front to the back of the car. Cool! Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more fun videos about this wild little car. I've got a big job coming up which will allow for some fun while we're in there mods. So be sure to stay tuned for that one. Also, please visit me on Facebook and Instagram. I'd love to hear from you over there. So with that said, thanks again, folks. We'll see you next time.